Greetings once again, my friends. Brother Joey here for another Signs of the Times report. And in this report, I want to focus on the United States and the tensions rising down in the, uh, in specifically the Asia Pacific. But uh, we're going to look at uh, the relationship with China as well as the North Korean threat, which has come up so frequently recently as these uh, Signs of the Times continue to unfold. And, um, We'll start with this piece here, talking about how uh, just two days ago it was reported that Trump's defense chief uh, was heading to Asia eyeing the Chinese and North Korean threats. And that was going to be the focus of his uh, trip over to Asia. But the interesting point I want to focus on is in this piece... Uh, it alludes to something that I had no idea about. I mean, I knew that U.S. troops were stationed in Japan and South Korea for various reasons, but I had no idea that it, uh, the numbers of which they had over there. And the piece goes on to talk about here, uh, saying that President Donald Trump's defense secretary uh, is expected to underscore U.S. security commitments to key allies in South Korea and Japan on his debut trip to Asia this week as concerns mount over North Korea's missile program and tensions with China continue to escalate. It says the trip is the first for retired Marine General James Mattis since becoming Trump's Pentagon chief and is also the first foreign trip by any of Trump's cabinet secretaries. Um, goes on to say officials say that the the fact that Mattis is first heading to Asia as opposed to perhaps visiting troops in Iraq or Afghanistan is meant to reaffirm ties with two Asian allies, uh, being South Korea and Japan, which host nearly 80,000 American troops. And the importance um, of the region overall lies in the relationships with those two um, as the U.S. continues to try to assert its dominance in the region, of course, in the name of uh, safety and humanitarian efforts. And uh, that seems to be the, usually the case uh, of uh, their reasoning behind it, when really uh, we know that uh, um, <laughs> most times that's far from the case. Uh, however, it goes on to mention that uh, that U.S. reaffirmation uh, of ties with South uh, Korea and Japan could be critical after Trump appeared to question the cost of such U.S. alliances during the election campaign. He also jolted the region by pulling Washington out of the uh, Asia-Pacific trade deal that Japan had championed, if you remember not too long ago, the TPP. Uh, Trump withdrew the U.S. out of that, and uh, many are calling for China to replace the United States in this deal. And, uh, of course, uh, um, well, remains to, to be seen what will happen there. But, uh, again, in the midst of all these tensions down there in the Asia-Pacific and the South China Sea specifically, uh, now we see, uh, and, of course, North Korea, uh, now we see uh, that uh, there are 80,000 United States troops uh stationed in Japan and South Korea. And of course, this is consistent with what was reported just a day ago, as uh, Steve Bannon was quoted as saying, we're going to war in the South China Sea, no doubt. As it says here in this report, the United States and China will fight a war within the next 10 years over islands in the South China Sea, and there's no doubt about that. At the same time, the U.S. will be in another major war in the Middle East. Those are the views, nine months ago at least, of one of the most powerful men in Donald Trump's administration, Steve Bannon, the former head of far-right news website Breitbart, who is now chief strategist at the White House. And so while the United States has 80,000 U.S. troops stationed in Japan and South Korea. Uh, we have uh, the White House chief strategist Steve Bannon, one of the most powerful men in Donald Trump's administration,
coming out and saying, we're going to war in the South China Sea, no doubt. And he also mentions that the U.S. will be involved in the Middle East wars as well, as they continue to intensify. Um, but uh, So we have Bannon coming out saying, we're going to war in the South China Sea, no doubt. Uh, we have uh, uh, 80,000 U.S. troops stationed in Japan and South Korea, not to mention what's going on on the other side in Eastern Europe, on the borders of Russia. Uh, I mean... It, we've been I've been talking about this for a long time and 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 I don't want to sound like a broken record but just we have to keep following these things and it's when, once you do you start to see what direction it's headed and when you study end time bible prophecy you start to see the exact nations mentioned lining up as uh, the foreshadowing of literal uh biblical prophecies are in the making before our very eyes and we're going to see some in the very near future uh, come to complete fulfillment um, but many are, are we're seeing the foreshadowing of many like I often talk about the Isaiah 17 and Jeremiah 49 prophecies on the destruction of Damascus and and, and of course there are others and we're going to talk about many of them but uh, here we see you know uh, uh, US Defense Secretary uh, James Mattis he came out Thursday, uh, yesterday, and uh, <clears throat> uh, said that the Trump administration is committed to strengthening uh, uh, the relations uh, even further with South Korea in the face of what he called the provocations that country faces from North Korea. So they're identifying the enemies in this particular reason as, uh, region as China and North Korea, and that's their 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 means that they use to justify their military buildup in that particular region then they use the russia uh threat to to build up in the eastern europe region with the nato forces and and, and we see this as even in the middle east and so it's nothing diff uh, no different here uh but certainly um uh, signs of the times of, as we hear wars and rumors of wars of major world powers being involved uh, all over the world in many different conflicts and it's certainly at le a level unprecedented in history when you look in terms of uh, military spending by the world uh, we're spending more now than at any other time in human history when you think about that it's pretty astonishing and it's only increasing further and further now, before I close, I will touch a little bit on this North Korean nuclear threat that uh, has been very vocal uh, in recent uh, uh, days, uh, as per usual. Um, but here's a piece talking about how after South Korea and the U.S. conducted joint military drills in Pyeongchang this week, North Korea threatened retaliation to what it labeled madcap midwinter exercises. Beginning January 15th and ending February 3rd, which is today, uh, the drills come amid speculation that the North will again defy UN sanctions by conducting another missile test. So, similar to the situation going on over there in Iran, uh, you know, with their missile testing, defying uh, sanctions and so forth. We have a similar thing being built up over here uh, uh, with North Korea. And it talks about here how uh, approximately 28,500 American troops have been deployed to help protect Seoul from Pyongyang. Um, and uh, this piece talks a little bit about that. But it also says here... Um, <clears throat> that uh, U.S. Captain Marcus Karlstrom described the exercises to reporters saying U.S. Marine Corps and uh, Republic of Korea Marine Corps partnered together at every level to build a camaraderie and friendship of the two countries, uh, of the, or excuse me, of the two countries' militaries, but also to increase our proficiency in the event where we have to fight a war together. And aside from uh, all the uh, um, missile testing that uh, North Korea has done recently, um, this was a report that uh, came out I wanted to throw in here. And of course, I'll link you up with it along with everything else I showed you in the video uh, in the description box below. Uh, but it talks about how 
uh, North Korea has restarted the plutonium production reactor at its uh, Yongbyon nuclear facility. And so uh, here we see that uh, they've uh, restarted plutonium production at that particular reactor. And, and so uh, interesting developments uh, in the light of uh, uh, everything that's going on uh, militarily all around them. And then, of course, with their verbal threats, with Kim Jong-un, he seems to utter a nuclear threat to the U.S. Uh, once a month. Um, and I can recall a few that I've reported on and done videos on. And so, um, certainly a tense situation in that part of the world as well. Um, not just down in the South China Sea uh, and the uh, uh, Southern Asia Pacific, but in the Northern Asia Pacific uh, as well, in the North Korean, South Korean region, uh, is also uh, part of that whole uh, area of conflict. In, in the midst of all the uh, North Korean activity, for lack of a better term, we see that the United States has come out and issued a warning that if nuclear arms are used, that there will be an overwhelming response, according to this piece here. It says, U.S. President Donald Trump's defense secretary warned North Korea on Friday, today, of an effective and overwhelming response if Pyongyang chose to use nuclear weapons, as he reassured Seoul of steadfast U.S. support at the end of a two-day visit. And he went on to say, he, any attack on the United States or our allies will be defeated and any use of nuclear weapons would be met with a response that would be effective and overwhelming, according to statements uh, made by Defense Secretary Jim Mattis at uh, South Korea's Defense Ministry. So, very intense situation over there as well, as I said. And my friends, you know, it's like Jesus said, that there would be distress of nations with perplexity upon the earth, that there would be wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom, there in Matthew 24. And we are certainly starting to see this on unprecedented levels worldwide, my friends. I'm going to close with that, but again, I'll link you guys up with the pieces in the description box below. Uh, but if you're not right with the Lord, and I pray you are, but if you're not, I pray that you seek him today with all your heart. Because if you do that, you will find him. Because you must repent of your sins and be born again through faith in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I pray that you are one of the few who find it. In Jesus' name, God bless you which has come up so frequently recently as these uh, signs of the times continue to unfold. And um, we'll start with this piece here talking about how uh, just two days ago it was reported that Trump's defense chief uh, was heading to Asia eyeing the Chinese and North Korean threats. And that was going to be the focus of his uh, trip over to Asia. But security commitments to key allies in South Korea and Japan on his debut trip to Asia this week as concerns mount over North Korea's missile program and tensions with China continue to escalate. It says the trip is the first for retired Marine General James Mattis since becoming Trump's Pentagon chief and is also the first foreign trip by any of Trump's cabinet secretary. <laughs>
in Japan and South Korea for various reasons, but I had no idea that it, uh, the numbers of which they had over there. And the piece goes on to talk about here, uh, saying that President Donald Trump's defense secretary uh, is expected to underscore U.S. securities. Um, goes on to say, officials say that the the fact that Mattis is first heading to Asia as opposed to perhaps visiting troops in Iraq or Afghanistan is meant to reaffirm ties with two Asian allies, uh, being South Korea and Japan, which host nearly 80,000 American troops and the importance 